Okay, before I start today's Retro Pie and PlayStation 1 setup guide, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe, and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content that I release almost every day on my channel, Just Jamie. That means you just get notified every time I release a new setup guide, plus, it helps my channel out a lot. So we're looking at Retro Pi then today and Raspberry Pi. So I've last uploaded a Raspberry Pi Retro Pi video almost a year ago. And because I cover such a wide scope of different systems on my channel, just Jamie, I thought let's go back to Retro Pi. A lot of people still use this. So first of all, we're going to need some games for this and we're going to need some BIOS files too. And the computer I'm using for this is actually the Raspberry Pi 400. If you're using a Raspberry Pi 4, of 4 gigabyte or 8 gigabyte model that's fine and also if you're using a Raspberry Pi 5 again that's fine so let's look at the game files first I've got Buster Move and this is in .bin and .q and I've also got Ridge Racer again in .bin and .q now you can use these inside a RetroPie that's no problem but I'm going to show you a program where we can actually convert these into .chd. If you're new to .chd or you've never heard of it, it just means that all these files are going to compress into one file, but I'm going to show you in a second how to do that. And it also saves us room as well on Raspberry Pi. So first of all, we're going to download software for this. This is chd man, and I'll leave the link in my description for you to download this. And if we just scroll down, you can download chdman.zip just here. Just download that. And once you've downloaded chdman.zip, this is what you're going to see. If we just open this up, you're going to get a few different bat files inside. So what I'm going to do is just create a new folder on my desktop. Right click, new folder. And I'm going to just call this chdman. And I'm going to just extract those contents into that new folder I've just created. Okay, so with the chdman folder, we got chman.exe. That's your execute ball. So I need to highlight this one. So just left click on it for now. And the next file I'm going to left click on whilst holding that control is QGDI ISO. Now, if I just drag and drop both of these into my Buster Move folder, what I'm going to do next is actually double left click on the dot bat. And this is now going to start compressing those files into CHD. So once that's finished doing its thing, we're now going to see we've got a CHD file and this is our game. So what we're going to do is just take out those contents which I've just dragged in. So CHD man and also the dot bat. I'm going to pop them back into the CHD man folder. And what we can do now is just literally delete the dot bins and the dot Q. We just leave the CHD file here and that's going to work fine. So as you know, I've also got another game here. So we've got Ridge Racer. And again for this, I'm going to just use the Q GDI ISO to CHD and the chdman.exe. So if I copy both those into that Ridge Racer folder and to start this, just double left click on the dot bat. And again, we're just going to wait for that process to finish. Okay, so this one's now finished, and like I say, what we need to do is just move those CHD files back into the CHD folder. So every time we want to convert our games into this format, that is very easy to find. And again, just like Buster Move, I'm going to just delete all of those .bins and .q and just leave the .chd here. So next up, what I'm going to show you to do is how to actually enter into your Raspberry Pi using a computer. So it's just use a Windows Explorer, like I've got open here for Ridge Racer. And if I go to the search bar, I just need to type in forward slash forward slash RetroPie and just press enter on this. And there we go. I'm now connected into RetroPie itself, which is also turned on, obviously. Now, just remember that you need to be connected to the same network for this to happen. So what we're going to do then is pop in our .chd ps1 games into the ROMs folder. So inside of your ROMs folder, we're going to just scroll down until we find PSX. And if we open up this one, I'm going to then drag in RidgeRacer.chd and just let that copy across. And of course, we can actually add games to RetroPie using USB stick. It's pretty much just a case 
of using a FAT32 USB stick and popping RetroPie as a folder in there. But anyways, we're going to do this the modern way nowadays. So I'm also going to put Buster Move in there, of course. And if I just move that one in there. Next up, what we need to add is some BIOS files. If we don't have BIOS files, we're not going to get to play any PS1 games at all. So what we're going to do is just come out of the ROMs folder and we're going to go into the BIOS folder and this is where your BIOS files are going to go. So in my BIOS folder on my desktop, so in my BIOS folder I've got five files here and this is the exact files that you need to play PlayStation 1 games. So what I'm going to do is just drag all five of these files inside the RetroPie BIOS folder and just let that transfer across. And what we're going to do next is just move over to my Raspberry Pi. Okay, so on the Raspberry Pi, what we're going to do first is just restart Emulation Station. So if I press Start button, what we're going to do from here is just go down to Quit. And I'm going to restart Emulation Station. And yes. And as we can see, we now got PlayStation. So I'm going to just go into PlayStation. And here's both of my CHD Man games, which I've just transferred. So what we're going to do is just scrape some artwork. So main menu, scraper, and I'm going to select screen scraper for this. And I'm going to go to scrape now. And under systems, I'm going to just make sure that PlayStation is checked, which it is. And I'm then going to go down to back and go to start. And this is then going to start scraping the artwork for Buster Move and my other game. So both games have been successfully scraped, if I just OK out of this, and what I'm going to do is just go to back. And next up, I'm going to open up one of my games, so I'm going to choose Ridge Racer. And before the game starts, if I just press one of my buttons, I'm pressing B, that's going to bring us to this screen. And from here, we can actually choose a different RetroArch core. So to do that, it's your top option, and if I just select this, I'm going to just make sure the core I want to use which is by default with RetroPie, this one selected. And this is NRPCSX Rearm. So I'm just going to OK that. And before we actually go into the game, we can actually change different settings from this screen. But for now, I'm going to just go down to launch. <laughs> Okay, so that's working really well on the Raspberry Pi 400, really smooth frame rates, I'm guessing, between 50 to 60 FPS on that. So obviously, if you're running a Raspberry Pi 5, you'll get better performance. And if you're running an original Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gigabyte, you'll get the same performance as my 400, whereas the Pi 4 8 gigabyte model, you'll get a bit more beef out of that. So what we're going to do is press select here, and I'm going to show you how to edit the game's metadata. So what happens is sometimes when we're transferring games and you go to scrape your games, it might not find it on the database. You might have lots of weird numbers, it's serial numbers. So by pressing select button on my controller, this opens up options. And if I just scroll down to edit this game's metadata, we can actually go to name just here and actually edit the name of the game. So I don't need to do with this one because it's worded just well. But if you do get any issues scraping art, then that's how to do it. You just go into that and then just edit it to put the correct name in. And then just go to OK. And from Edit Metadata, we have got other options here. We can add a description to our games if we like. And we can even give it a rating and so on. So it's already scraped, but that's how you do it. So we're just going to go to Save. And I'm going to open up Buster Move Out.
okay that's it for today's retroply ps1 or psx or playstation 1 setup guys so like i said at the start of the video if you like what you see today hit notifications subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content and if you're new to my channel i pretty much cover everything emulation related so check out my playlist i do everything from standalone microcomputer emulators to standalone console emulators to front end systems such as retrobat batacera launchbox and beyond i pretty much cover everything and also be sure to check me out on social media i'm on facebook instagram twitter and tiktok but until next time stay retro we